Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm James and this is Rush Me 3D. So today we're going to be taking a look at the Dragon Hot End. Um, this particular one is from Triangle Labs. Um, it's a basically it's a drop-in replacement for a V6 style hot end. So let's take a look. Okay, so here is the Dragon Hot End. Um, and this, like I say, this one is from Triangle Labs. So um, there are a couple of different versions of this you can get the standard flow and a high flow version um, and then you also probably would have seen this sold by another company as well so this particular one from Triangle Labs via uh, Aliexpress literally comes in um, this clear box in about five different plastic bags which is a bit of a waste but there we go so this is what you get in the box basically a sock some spare screws some allen keys um, your Bowden uh, clip or coupler and then a couple of clips and then the hot end itself and a 0.4 copper plated nozzle or a, yeah a copper plated nozzle so You'll, you'll already be noticing there's a couple of things missing to make this a complete hot end. That being a heater cartridge, um, a thermistor, and a fan duct, um, and a fan obviously. So, initially I thought, well, if they haven't included a fan duct and a fan, you don't need one. Uh, I don't believe that's the case. This does still need some sort of cooling over the, the heat sink area so you basically are left to yourself to get that which is one of the negatives I would put on this hot end so we'll come back to that later when we've fitted it to a machine so let's just have a look at the hot end itself to start with so so it's actually a really I like actually really like the look of this hot end um, you'll see obviously some um, similarities with both the um, Mosquito hot end and obviously uh, an E3D V6 is basically a mashup of the two really. Um, this groove mount part is actually uh, I suppose an optional accessory. You, there are actually mounting holes on top which you can use to mount the hot end but it comes with the groove mount already attached um, because there are not many as far as I'm aware, printers that will allow you to mount directly via the screw um, pattern on the top. Um, so it comes pre-assembled apart from the nozzle and I've already gone ahead and fitted that and hot tightened it so it's ready to go. Um, but yeah, it looks it looks really nice. I quite like the look of it. Um, there's not really a, an awful lot to say about it. It's um, like I say, it's a mashup between of two different styles of hot end, really. Um, it's nice that they've included a sock because that will keep that clean. But other than that, that you know, you don't really get a lot for your money. Um, so at the time of recording, I believe this is about fifty-eight pound, something like that. So this is the standard flow version. Um, full disclaimer, um, Triangle Labs sent me this um, at a heavily discounted price. I'm not going to say how much, um, but that is not going to influence the, the content that I give you about it. So, basically if you buy this hot end, just be aware that you need a heated cartridge and a thermistor to start with. Now if this is going in a Prusa Mark II S upwards, You'll have all, you'll have everything you need here, and with that uh, printer. If this is going on a different printer, even if it's got a hot end that you're replacing, it has to have a heater cartridge and a cartridge-style thermistor. So that's important to remember. Um, it's also important to remember that this, as far as I'm aware from the the research I've done, does need cooling over the heatsink and you don't get a part called a, 
a fan duct or a fan. So just be aware of that. Because I do believe that if you try and run this without it, it will clog. Um, and I experienced that once, because I have actually already used this hot end just to make sure it was all functioning, make sure there was no defects or anything. Um, and I did, without a fan, have a clog. Uh, as soon as I put that fan on, not no problems whatsoever. So be aware of that. Um, so I mean, let's let, let's move this review or this initial review on, and let's get it fitted to a, a printer. Okay, so we've had a look at the hot end. Uh, we've spoke about the fact that basically what you're buying is the metal parts of the hot end, um, and. I told you that you're going to need a thermistor, heat cartridge, fan duct and a fan. So I've gone, and get, gone ahead and put the, the hot end basically together. Uh, we've got the heat cartridge and thermistor and then the fan duct. So this is basically ready now to be put into a printer. So let's do that. Okay, so as you can see I've mounted the hot end into the simple metal. So the hot end currently has the groove mount attachment fitted, as we spoke about earlier, that's um, a way of mounting the hot end. Um, and on the printer bot I had to do a, I had to print an extra couple of adapters. So there's a beat, this black uh, red part here, and then there's a red part in the top here. So the, the printer bot hot ends actually have more of a, a V groove in the, the hot end. Um, and that works with their extruders. It doesn't work so well with the groove mount. Um, also because the hot ends are actually physically different lengths as well. So it doesn't really mount correctly. So this red piece here is about a centimetre in height. About 10, cent, uh, 10 millimetres. Uh, and that basically just is a spacer really. And then this part here goes onto the groove of the hot end and then screws up into the, the extruder block here, this piece of aluminium. Uh, and that's how this groove mount system works. So this is actually designed for an E3D V6, but it works perfectly fine with this. So mounting it wasn't a problem. Um, so a couple of other things you have to be aware of. On this particular printer, you would not have um, a thermistor uh, from stock that you can put into this hot end. So remember, this hot end does not come with a heater or a thermistor. So you have to do a little bit of extra wiring, um, but if you've got those parts laying around, you can use it on this printer. This would work ideally in a Mark II 2S or Mark III Prusa they will just be a direct replacement. You take them out of your existing hot end block and put them straight in. So yeah, not a problem mounting it to this printer. Works really well. Um, this this printer is not brilliant in, in part cooling. It just literally has a fan that blows down onto the build plate. So it's not directional in any way. But there are plenty of fan ducts on Thingiverse if you need to do that. Um, so let me just reposition the camera and we can have a look at some of the prints I've done with this setup. Okay, so let's have a look at some prints that we did. So obviously the first print you always do, or you should do, is a Benchy. Um, now the filament I used on this was particularly bad, so there's a lot of stringing, so that's not an issue with the hot end, that is the filament. Um, but actually this Benchy came out incredibly well. Now obviously that's probably more to do with the printer and the slicing profile itself. This is a well tuned printer and it's something I would always get a nice Benchy from anyway. Let me just see if I can get this in to focus a bit. So yeah, that's a pretty good benchy, really happy with that. Um, so to combat the part cooling problem with this printer is obviously I, I 
positioned the print so that the, the bow of the ship, which is the part that typically you see cooling problems on, directly into the fan. So the the chimney stack didn't come out particularly well because that's a very small area that's getting printed relatively quick, but everything else came out really well. Um, so the, the next thing I printed was uh, Wolfie by Louise, I think she's known as, Doobie 3D. Uh, and there'll be links in the description to all of these files anyway. So this came out again really, really well. The only problem was um, a part on the tail. So yeah, you might just be able to see that there. That basically was the problem with, that was the only problem with this print. Everything else came out incredibly well. Really nice print, really nice model. So yeah, that came out really well. Um, and then I did a Cali Cat, just because. Again, really well. Um, and the only problem would be where you had the small features um, and the, the lack of part calling. But apart from that, it came out really well. So yeah, really good. Um, then I did a couple of vase mode prints. So we've got this vase by Filament Frenzy, Tom. Um, and I all, always do my vase prints with typically a 0.4mm nozzle um, and a 1mm extrusion width. And this creates a really strong um, vase mode print. It's really, really strong. Um, and then you can see the... The PEI flex bed gives an incredibly glass like finish. So, base mode print, no problem. Um, I then did this um, tolerance puzzle, I think it's called, and this is from Devon on Make Anything. Again, links will be in the description. So, the point 0.4 worked fine. Point three worked fine. Now the point, so point two and point one, let's do the point two first, will go together just with a little little bit of a wiggle and a push. So that goes together. Um, point one, point one five is really, really tight, but if you push it, it will go together. So that, that printed really nice as well. Um, giant Bitcoin because why not? I've got some Bitcoin, might as well have a big print from it. Um, and this was from Kari, and again, links will be in the description for all of these files. Uh, and then the last print I did, another vase mode print, a pink open source vase from Bugman from Nick. Again, one mil uh, extrusion width, really strong. You can you can actually use these for functional pots. They're not too thin, so they're really nice. So these are all PLA prints, and these all came out absolutely fine. Um, with the fan that I've got attached to the hot end, which is only powered by five volts, it's enough to cool it. Um, I'm going to do some more tests in other materials and see if I do need to have more cooling on the hot end. So let me reposition the camera and I'll give you my final thoughts. Okay, so there we have it. The Dragon Hot End from Triangle Labs. So my overall summary for the hot end is it's, it's nice, built well, um, but there are a few niggles for me that don't make it a complete um, a complete hot end. The lack of basically, you're buying a the metal parts of a hot end, so you're not getting a thermistor, you're not getting a heat cartridge, you're not getting a fan or a fan duct. Which to me, um, I'm not sure if it justifies the price. Um, now, obviously, you can buy the heat uh, cartridge and the thermistor from Triangle Labs, all on their website or on the AliExpress store. 
So you can get those things, but the lack of the fan and fan duct for me are quite important. Um, now, if you're putting this in a Prusa, you haven't got to worry about it because they're built into the extruder assembly. But if you're like for me for the the printer bot, or I'm going to put it in a different printer bot as well to try some other materials, um, I need the fan duct to blow onto that hot end because it does need it. So it's a little bit odd that it doesn't come with them. Um, I don't know if that's something that Triangle Labs can look into. I don't think it would be a huge, even if they designed one and gave you the file, one that you knew fit that hot end exactly, um, and then they sold the fan, I don't know. I think there needs to be a solution for that. Overall, it does what a hot end does, melts plastic and puts it down. So it does what it's meant to do. Um, and if you're, like I say, if this is going into a Prusa, um, eventually I'll probably put it in mine as well to have a go, then it will work. Um, I would probably give it an overall score of like seven, seven and a half out of 10. And it's only purely because of those things that it's missing. It functions as a hot end should. So yeah, that's basically my initial review. I'm going to be getting a, f a lot more prints through it, different materials, put it on different printers to see what it can do. And we'll do a review, I don't know, maybe six months down the line so we can see what it's actually gone through. So yeah, overall, if you want to look into it, there'll be a link in the description. Uh, I'll leave it up to you. So thanks for watching, um, please consider liking the video if you liked it, put any comments you want down in below and I'll get back to you um, and until next time keep on making.